Hey there, Lynn Allen. Welcome to another AutoCAD tip courtesy of Catalyst Magazine. All right, so I am snowed in in Portland, Oregon, so what better time than to share a tip with you, my favorite people in the whole entire world. All right, so for the last few weeks, I've been talking all about bringing a PDF file into AutoCAD as AutoCAD objects, obviously a real crowd pleaser, right? So I just wanna wrap that whole thing up by just sharing with you a few of the other details that I think are important, all right? And then we'll be done with that, and I won't talk about it anymore, I promise. But I wanna make sure you know all the ins and outs of bringing that PDF file into AutoCAD, all right? So we brought it in, and we talked a lot about text, bringing SHX text in, and how to convert it over to M text. But I wanna just talk about a few other things, all right? so. As I wander through this drawing file, I just wanna show you this is a dimension, and I'd like to point out that even though it does a much better job in 2018 of bringing those uh, dimensions that are not horizontal in as making them look good, let me just point out that you can see these are not associative dimensions, right? This, this is this is M text, this is a polyline. Um, so these are not smart dimensions, so you should know that. If you start modifying things, those dimensions are not gonna update automatically. And let me also point out, let me just come up here, this is obviously some hatching, and you'll see as I move my cursor around here, this cross hatching is also polylines. This is individual objects, so the cross hatching also does not come across as intelligent cross hatch patterns. I mean, I can tell you the reason for all this is because um, your PDF file doesn't understand what cross hatching is, it doesn't understand these dimensions, and so when you round trip it like this, it loses the intelligence, unfortunately. What else? Hmm. This, we know this would, of course, be a block, right? This would be a block of a door, but look, these are individual objects. That's an arc, and it likes to use a lot of polylines. <laughs> There's a lot of polylines in here, which is better than using lines, so that's good. All right, but I did tell you that it does a good job of images. It does bring images in. This is, in fact, a, hold still, an image, a raster image. You should know that it converts raster images to PNG files, so it does bring raster images across. Where, pray tell, do those PNG files end up? Lynn, tell me where. I'm gonna, you get to pick where is where. <laughs> I'm gonna go into options. I'm gonna to go to files, and you will see that there's an option right here for PDF import image location. So this is where you're going to tell it exactly where you want those PNG files to land, all right? So you're gonna set that up, and you know, it's, it's static. So you can't have it follow, you know, different projects, unfortunately. You need to come in here and set it for each of those, those different PDF files that you bring in, all right? so. There you have it. That's kind of what I wanted to follow up with you. Make sure that you're fully aware of what's happening inside of those PDF files that you're bringing in. And that wraps it up. No more. Drop mic on the PDF files. Next time I see you, I'm going to move on to a totally different subject, all right? But now you are the PDF import expert. Oh, yeah. Impress your friends. Great dinner conversation. <laughs> anyway, see you back here in two more weeks. Peace out.